How's it going, everybody? Hey, welcome to another Ride or Die, America's most provocative and dangerous vlogging series. Very dramatic right now, very dramatic tonight. Got that grayscale going in the shadows in a Walmart parking lot, a beautiful Walmart parking lot. Oh, yeah. Don't you just love going to fucking Walmart? Don't you just love it? Doesn't make you want to fucking stick your head in an oven or anything like that. No? Good. Because this is, this is the experience, okay? This is who we are as a country right now. Maybe it's who we've always been. I don't know. I really don't like it in there. Um, you know, sometimes I've been forced to go in there lately. Convenience also. You know, I collect movies. I collect Blu-rays and stuff. They started carrying fucking... Shout Factory and Scream Factory releases at reasonable prices. You know, these are boutique labels. Usually you're paying, you know, even on a sale, you're usually paying like 18 bucks. Pop in there, get yourself that double disc collector's edition of uh, what, Big Trouble in Little China. 15 Bones. Steel. Candyman. $10. Steel. <laughs> Firestarter, twelve dollars steal. So yeah, it kind of oh shit. I mean, uh, fucking the Fly Collection, forty dollars steal. That's like that's like six movies, dude. It's no joke. Maybe five movies. Five movies. No joke. Okay. You want these kind of quality titles? You're gonna have to pay that money. Not at Walmart. Walmart's going to help you out. It's going to say, hey, young man. Heard you're interested in cinema. Why don't you come on in? Come on into Walmart's warm embrace. Yeah. I don't like going in there, though. You know, so another thing that's drawing me back in? Uh, reasonable energy drink prices. Now, you know, when we're, when we're balling, we go with bang. We go with bang energy drinks. And you can get a four pack, one of those cubes, six fifty. Six fifty for four. Usually, even on a good day, even when you're getting them on sale, they're like a, they're like two bucks. Never really seen them go below a dollar ninety eight at the Walmart. But you buy them in the cubes, six fifty eight. This is almost a reasonable exchange. Almost. I mean, energy drinks. I mean, shouldn't be drinking them. I'm sure my fucking liver is pickled. You know, you do all these other things to make yourself healthy, you lose weight, you kind of stop smoking as much. I even quit smoking. I quit smoking for like two years. I was so stoked on being a father. And then uh, and then I was a father for two years and had to start smoking again. <laughs> it's actually directly related to my diet. Like I couldn't handle like not eating. Which is this vicious cycle because I gained a bunch of weight because I quit smoking and then I have to smoke to lose weight so it suppresses my appetite, you know, because I'm a snacker late at night. But yeah, I mean, these, these bangs are delicious. You know, if we're, if we're balling, we're going bang. If we're not, we're going Rockstar Exdurance. Anything that basically has that 300... <coughs> oh, oh my God. Hold on. Let me get a quick bang in right now. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Get that out of my throat. We go Rockstar Exdurance. Anything with a 300 milligram of caffeine content or however they concoct that. I, You know, I have a feeling it's probably some sort of weird chemicals. Uh, for some reason, they all have like a CQ10 and super creatine like you're a fucking, like you're Rocky. <laughs> like you're a boxer. Like you're out there doing that shit. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not sure why it's in there. It's probably killing me somehow. I'm sure it's not healthy to consume those things, especially at the frequency that I do when you're not like out there lifting weights, when you're not out there living the actual Rocky lifestyle. Now, past and future guest, Dan Prophet, he could probably uh, use a bang every once in a while, you know? His body could probably hang handle it because he's a butcher, okay? That is kind of like a Rocky-esque lifestyle. He's worked in some of those factories like Rocky did. 
So he knows what's up, and his body knows what's up, and his body is craving the creatine. Okay? Serious shit. This is science. This is science. You know, you think I come on here unprepared? Think I'm just vamping? No, this is a prepared statement. This is like my declaration of independence for the day. I'm telling it to you, the people at home. You're welcome. Yeah, you know what's crazy though? I actually stand. I fucking. Where's that camera at? Where is it? You can't see it because of my mood lighting. Here we go. Birthday bash. Birthday cake bash. I stand birthday cake bash. I drink so many bangs. All different flavors, all different kinds. I had I went here. Because you just assume, oh, that's going to be disgusting. That's going to be no good. We've all had birthday cake flavored ice cream. No good. Candies, donuts, confectionaries. None of it, It's never good. It just tastes like fucking tart marzipan. Okay? But in liquid form, it's working for me. I think it's one of those things like, you know, I've just gone all the way around. And now it's like a, I'm like a cool teenager that can drink whiskey on the rocks because I'm like, well, you know, I'm fine. We're not even on the rocks. just straight neat. That's how fucking cool I am. You're like, oh, yeah? Well, sorry, guys. Sorry you don't like it. Sorry you can't. Oh, no, sorry I don't have any Coke. Coca-Cola, by the way. <laughs> so I don't have any of that stuff, so you're just going to have to deal. Or not drink anything at all. And that's how I feel with this, because it's like, you know, what if we were all hanging out? What if we're all partying and, you know, we want to hit up a bang? I want to slam a bang with my bros. They're like, all you got is birthday cake bash? I'm like, you know, sorry, bro. Sorry, guy. Sorry for you. Isn't that what they say? Is that a saying? Is that a turn of phrase? Sorry for you. That might be a southern thing. I don't know. You know, I've lived down here for a few years, but I still do not feel at all connected to the culture or the like the colloquialisms, the nomenclature. Like I've actually probably purposefully, not even to be a contrarian or be that guy, have fought against it because I don't like the way it sounds. I'm not a big fan of regional <laughs> accents and stuff. Even myself, right? I was raised and grew up in Massachusetts and New Hampshire for about 18 years, almost 19 years. And I have almost like this very indistinct, plain American accent. Now, I have a little bit of a lisp for flavor, you know, for texture for uniqueness but other than that <sighs> I wish I had a fucking cigarette right now it'd be a good time to have a smoke it would be right now I could take you with me we'd be fucking hanging out smoking, joking you know how it is you know how it be yeah I don't know <laughs> fucking Walmart man fucking Walmart It used to be a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. This Walmart in particular used to be awful. And then they got the self-checkout shit straightened out. They got two different areas. They have like a bigger area and a smaller area. They have like a bigger area with like room for groceries if you got a big cart full of groceries. And then they have like the little mini area for when you only got like 10 or 15 items. This ends up working very well. Now granted, I'm two minds of these things because... It was just, we're just going to automation quicker and quicker and quicker. And the first sign of that was self-checkout. And this goes back when I lived in Boston. I was 19. Yeah, I was 19, 18, 19. Lived in Boston for like uh, almost a year. Alston, Massachusetts. Oh, I guess Alston, a suburb of Boston. But the Hannafords down the road from where I lived already had self-checkout. This was back in 2004, 2005. How old am I? Somewhere in there. You know, you can do math. I know you. You're a smart guy. I know you're a smart gal. Of course, our demographic is probably, I'm sure it's an even split. Equity is very important to Zoo Box. But yeah. 
So I'm two minds of it, but it did, it changed the experience of coming to a place like Walmart. Now granted, you're gonna get your fucking mongoloids, you're gonna get your dummies that cannot still, to this day, 10 years into this experience of fucking having self-checkout, they're not gonna be able to get their shit together and figure it out. And they're gonna hold everybody up and it's a nightmare. Um, but most of the time it ends up going pretty well because like people that work at Walmart in general, some of the most apathetic customer service people you'll ever meet, they do not give a flying fuck. They don't give a fuck. And uh, so not having to deal with them in a checkout is even better because sometimes it would take forever. And they're always hassling you for some stupid fucking reason. Like just completely brain dead. No fucking thought in their minds. Not like they're probably not like that in their real life. But when like you cross the threshold into Walmart, like you drop 20 IQ points and you become like a zombie employee. But yeah, they don't give a fuck at Walmart. Got self-checkout, get those self-checkout prices. I see people all the time. Just like out of the corner of my eye, just like blatantly, blatantly just fucking stealing probably hundreds of dollars worth of things. And uh, there's somebody, you know, they'll check you. Sometimes they'll come over and scan your receipt and they're like, oh, okay, see ya. They don't look. They don't care. I don't know, you know, I probably wouldn't give a fuck either, to be honest with you. I've worked in retail Never worked in a department store, though. Well, I worked in, at an old Navy, old Navy for a brief period of time when I lived in Alaska. But that's the closest thing. And I was like a stalker. Not a stalker as walking around chasing people. I stock shelves. Don't be obtuse. You know? I know you're thinking that. I know you're like, oh, a stalker, eh, buddy? From the shadows. But, yeah... And I didn't give a fuck back then either. Like, if somebody, if I had seen people stealing shit, I probably wouldn't have cared. And maybe that's counterintuitive, you know, like, oh shit, you know, theft goes up, store's gonna close. It would have to be an egregious amount of stuff for that to happen, though. They tell you that, but they have, you know, you talk to managers, and you talk to loss prevention people that work at places like this. Because I'm a, you know, I like to talk to people about whatever. I've met some people like that. They have in their budget, like, what they can, like, for loss is a lot of money. So a place like Walmart is probably, like, millions of dollars that they assume off the top is going to be stolen or whatever. It's a loss for them. You know, it's crazy, though. They don't really care about, like, you know, because there's no way to really manage food, but it's still electronics. That's the stuff that they, like, really have, like, all these preventative measures and you still have to go into glass or you still have to go to a cashier to take off some fucking security device. That is still a thing. But everything else at Walmart, pretty free reign. I'm sure there's some overzealous employees who care, though. You know. You gotta find them. You gotta know to see the look. You know, you gotta get the look. Get it right. Well, yeah, that's my experience tonight. That's what I'm uh, talking to you guys. I hadn't done one in a what, like, almost two weeks? Had to get one done. Had to do it. There's some guy getting carts. He's looking at me. He's like, who are you talking to, buddy? If only he knew. If only he knew. I'm talking to the world right now. Coming to you live from your fucking interweb zone place media player. Anyways, um, you have the best one ever, and go fuck yourself. <laughs>